Hello everyone and welcome to this session number 10. Let's take a review of the lines of the soccer field. And welcome to this new session. Let's start right away with our warm up. Today we're going to do it in place. So let's start with a little bit of marching, pumping our arms a little bit, and then go into a light jog. If you want, what you could do is do a few steps forward, two steps back, two steps forward few steps back, but basically you can just run into place. All right, let's activate our arms a little bit and do like this cross country motion, just to change it up a bit. Push off with your calves a little bit. Your shoulders are moving. And from here, we're gonna go to a few jumping jacks. All right, now we're moving to our high knees. Get those knees nice and high. And now we go to the back of the legs, going to the butt kicks. All right, let's go into some skipping. Good. Open the gate and close the gate. So first open the gate. Nice big circles. Open that knee. Okay. And now we'll go close the gate. So open and then come in. Open, come in. And today, we're actually going to try to do the high, uh, the high kick and the back kick all in one. So stand on your leg and just do swing kicks. So forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. Same on the other side. Forward, back. Your balance will be a little bit challenged. Certainly for me is on this side. Okay, let's do a couple cut calf raises. Are you proud of that? And then do a little jump rope. You can move your arms if you want. You don't have to. And maybe let's throw in like a double jump or a high knee jump which would be two uh, rounds of the jump rope going around. Every say five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Good. All right. Let's do a couple uh, lateral motions. So just nice and light. Go side to side. And we can throw in a little grapevine, just for added agility and coordination. You can twist your hips while doing that. Okay, now let's go from bottom to top, ankle rotations, one direction, other direction, again, one direction, other direction, good. 
Couple of light squats. Okay, a few lunges with an arm raise. Lunge, arm raise. Lunge, arm raise. Lunge, arm raise. One more time. Lunge, arm raise. Lunge, arm raise. All right, as we go up, now we should be all warmed up. Glutes, hip flexors, our legs. Let's go to the core area. Do a few. Um, core twists. We're going to do single hit. We're going to do a few double hits where you go deeper in a second. And after the twists, which is the horizontal motion, we're going to go into vertical motion and we're going to do the tilts. So first look up, you can go up and go down, and you go past your head. Past your head, past your shoulder, past your shoulder, and all the way, all the way. Great. Moving up. Runners also have to take care of their upper body. So open the chest, open the back. Activate those shoulders in the horizontal motion. All right. This actually feels really good. And then let's go into rotating our arms for the rest of the movement and the rest of the range of the shoulders going backwards and then let's go forward a little bit and finish up with a little bit of loosening up the neck with some head rotations and we're ready to go let's start today's theme is basically frog so one type of trap that I wanted to look at is the fall or a fall tree trap. So basically you're getting a ball that is called vertical, so you're, you're getting a ball that is behind you. The ball is rolling, so you're going to do a light trap to kind of follow with, with another trap that is going to uh, propel you forward. So let's see a couple of these. So basically, as you can see, you can talk the ball to yourself. You follow the ball. You're trapped with one foot, it looks like you're going backwards, but then you continue forward in order to go for a flop. All right, soccer players, sometimes getting paid and pays off. So today I have my most dummy opponent, dummy defender, and we're going to try a type of dribble that you might have seen, but it's not used that much. So it's, it's, it's used. Um, not so frequently. If you use it to surprise, it can be very effective. So basically, I'm down. I'm coming down the wing. Okay, I'm dribbling the ball down the wing. My opponent is coming towards me, and what I'm gonna do instead of try any uh, tight moves or so, I'm just gonna send the ball one way, and I will go the other way. So I basically split. That way, the defender will be hopefully confused on where where to go, and that hesitation will allow me to come back, get the ball and then cross it. It has to be executed quickly. You have to be maybe deceiving with your with, with, with your with your eyes, maybe looking one way and then sending ball the other way. Um, it has to be done kind of quickly with the foot, just a light touch just to get the ball passed, all right? Because what, what we don't want is the opponent to stretch the leg out and intercept the ball. All right, let's try a few. Again, this is the type of move that can be really effective, but it cannot be used too much. Have fun with it. And now for our passing, we're going to do some crossing. So I'm going to start with the balls off, run down a little bit, look up, and I'm going to aim just outside the mini ball. The reason why you aim outside the mini ball, or maybe more specifically between the mini ball and the penalty spot, is that it's close enough to the goal where the forward can score, 
but it's also far enough from the goal where the goalie is not going to intercept it, or if they do, they're going to have to run out past the small box, which is a risky thing to do because you could get cut off, you could miss the catch, and uh, the goalie has a difficult choice in that case. That's why we're trying to aim at the little orange cones that I play between the mini box and the penalty box. All right, let's see a few. At first, I'm going to go maybe slower pace, a little lower, and then I'm going to start just booting it a little harder and more aggressive. That's a pretty good spot right there. Sometimes as a goalie, uh, you might get surprised by the fact that the clock comes in low and 45 degrees out, or as a defender, as a matter of fact, because everyone might be collapsing towards the goal, and one of our forwards could stay kind of like at the penalty spot, and now the pass comes in diagonally and low. That's often done at a highest level. Okay, let's see how this looks. marking there's um, one activity that we're going to do that is basically tagging but the special thing is that we're going to start in uh, two different positions the chaser is going to be starting in a push-up position and the runner is going to or the person being chased is going to start in a crouching, crouching position this is how it looks once he gets up i can just go down and now i go after him and tag now at home in this one-to-one -one marking game, uh, Jeff is going to be the person who I try to mirror. So whatever movement he does, I have to imitate and follow. Here we go. challenge is going to be on juggling but this time we're not going to do juggling technique or just fun or variety we're actually going to go for numbers okay so we're maybe going to start just by dropping the ball okay getting warmed up couple 
you know, with both feet, and now we get it going. You can start it by dropping the ball like this and go one, two, three, four, etc. Or you can pick the ball up and try to set a number, okay? Maybe just five. It might be three, it might be 10, 50, 100, who knows? In any case, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Maybe you go a little higher, okay? Maybe you go your knees or your head and count from there. In any case, have fun with the numbers. For our rolling stones of the day, I wanted to show you just a little bit of positioning and um, make sure that you know where to stand if you're the goalie in different situations. For example, the first situation we're going to look at is the penalty. The penalty spot is just 12 yards away. So in the penalty, you actually have to start on the line. You want to stay on the line and not even walk, okay? Now, there are a couple shots that are not going to be uh, easy to get, the upper corner. But if you stay nice and low and you compel yourself, you can get the lower one. Now, if you're not too tall, it's going to be hard to dive right away. So what you do is if the ball is going that way, take a half step and then you dive. Same thing on the other side. Stay low, half step, and then you die. Okay? Now, another one that we need to look at is the corner kick. Okay? So, on the corner kick, let's say the corner is kind the corner kick is being kicked from, the, the, the corner kick is being kicked from that side. You don't want to stay on the first post because the ball might go above you, okay? Above you, and then you'll have to chase it backwards. Now, you also don't want to stay too much in the middle. In the middle is okay, but it's almost better to stay just a couple of steps and keep this way. So when you keep this away, because it's easier to run forward than to go backwards. There are some people that aim at the second post and then you're exposed. So stay about two thirds of the way away from the goal and play uh, a teammate on the, on the near post, on that post, in order to block. Okay? Now, a final one would be where to place yourself when somebody's coming in. Don't stay inside the goal if somebody has seen everybody and they're coming in. You'll have to come out and stay low, maybe even put a knee down, okay? So you make yourself big, as big as possible, just kidding, just like this, okay? And then you try to intercept the ball. But if you stay back, you're just leaving too much room for a shot. All right, practice those positions, and that'll make you a better goal. All right, now that we're at our final stretch of the day, I'm going to stretch my quads a little bit. I just wanted to uh, talk really quickly about how to talk to referees. All right, first of all, it's better not to talk to referees during the game, and certainly not in a confrontational way. All right, I would say... If you really have to say something, you can go to a referee and say, I don't mean to question your decision, or sir, I don't mean to uh, be rude, but I really didn't mean to touch the ball with a hand, or I slipped and hit that player. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that it wasn't my intention. So, in general, give them the benefit of the doubt on a call, because they will get uh, sometimes vindictive. And uh, you're not you're gonna get them their bad side. So there is no point in being confrontational, in being um, kind of like verbally abusive. Also because you're gonna get a yellow card. You can be nice about it. You can let let a minute go. You can say it once. Okay. So if you don't agree with the call, sir, I don't agree with the call. This is it. Let it go. If you keep going, a card will be coming. All right. I will see you next time.